Good evening, friends. We just returned home from eating at Citricos at the Grand Floridian. It opened just a few days ago. We have never eaten there before, yeah. but they have completely changed the decor inside. They've changed the menu completely, and we were very excited. All we knew is that they have expensive food that looked really good, and we were supposed to dress up, so that's what we did. And everything was brand new to us, and we had the best time. While they were closed, they actually remodeled the entire restaurant and introduced a Mary Poppins theme. Mm -hmm. Specifically, Mary Poppins returns with a few homages back to the original Mary Poppins, but it's all super subtle throughout the restaurant. They have things like butterflies on some of the lights. The main chandeliers in the dining room are inspired by umbrellas, kind of have that umbrella look to them. The patterns on the furniture have cherry blossoms referencing Cherry Tree Lane and the sommelier room, which will eventually be a private dining experience that they offer, has pictures of 17 Cherry Tree Lane hanging on the wall and a little coat rack in the corner that has Mary Poppins' actual carpet bag on it, as well as her little umbrella and a few little penguins down on the ground. And they're the cutest little penguins ever. And the best part is, because Robert always wears hats, they did ask to take his hat while we were there, so they put it on the hat rack and included my umbrella that we brought that looks like the Mary Poppins umbrella, and they put it in the umbrella holder next to the Mary Poppins umbrella. So it was just really cool that we got to see our stuff on this actual hat rack. Now, as Alyssa mentioned, this is a signature restaurant, so you do have a dress code there. You don't have to wear a jacket, it is optional, but they do ask you to wear colored shirts and no shorts, things like that. So when we went there, we were all dressed up, ready to go, got our seats, and then we looked at the menu, and everything on the menu sounded really, really good and we were having a hard time deciding so after talking with our server getting some recommendations we decided instead of two dishes for the first course we were just gonna get four because we really couldn't decide between them go big or go home right we started with the pork belly that was paired with a fried plantain croquette i was not a fan of that i actually felt like it wasn't needed but the pork belly was really good. It was a really nice size. It had great flavor. They'd yeah. seared it on top perfectly. And honestly, this was really, really good to start things off. I kind of thought this might be my favorite of the first course until I tried the other items that we ordered. I ordered the smoked duck breast, which I love duck anyway, but this had a pasta with it. The flavors in this were amazing. I absolutely loved it. This was my second favorite starter that we got. And I'm not a big fan of duck most of the time, but the smoky flavor mm -hmm. in this really got me. This was awesome. I would probably agree this is my number two of the things that we ordered. I ordered a sweet corn bisque that was poured right there table side that also had some pickled fennel in there, which I've never had before, and popcorn, strangely enough. <laughs> and I thought it was a very strange dish. I thought it was gonna be really weird, but actually the flavors worked really well together. I am not a fan of fennel most of the time, but the pickled fennel with this sweet corn bisque was delicious. The bisque was actually not sweet in and of itself. I expected it to be sweeter because it is corn. It was more like a palate cleanser, but when we added the fennel to it, that made it super sweet. It was a very strange combination, and yet it totally worked. We both loved it. And speaking of strange combinations, we also ordered a salad. And this one, as they started telling me about the different things in the salad, I wondered how it was gonna taste. And I should have known it was gonna be delicious because the server said it's his favorite thing on the menu. It was a strawberry salad. Underneath the salad, there was some chamomile infused goat cheese, which was super creamy and really good. Had some spiced sunflower seeds on there and a bacon vinaigrette. And then of course these strawberries and the flavors and the juices from the fruit and the bacon vinaigrette and the crunchiness mm -hmm. of the seeds and the cheese. It all just worked so well together. This was hands down my favorite of the starters. It was both of our favorite starters. This was the best salad I have ever had. It had so much flavor, it was so delicious, and so we made sure to eat everything else first, and then we definitely had that so we'd have that nice taste before our entrees came. Now they've added a variety of non-alcoholic mocktails to the menu when they reopened, and I asked for a recommendation from the server. He recommended the Purple Penguin, so that's what I got. It's a combination of pineapple peach, grenadine, and lavender mixed with some seltzer water. It was amazing. The lavender really shone through in this. It had a very floral taste to it, 
but super refreshing. I wish I had like a big bottle of this for the hot summertime here in Florida because it was delicious. And we'd like to clarify no penguins were harmed in the making of this drink. For the entree, I had to get the filet mignon. It sounded delicious. It's oak grilled, came with some mashed potatoes that they said were really buttery, and oh my goodness, were they not kidding. They were super buttery. They were so light, so amazing. I just wanted a huge side of just those mashed potatoes. They were so good. If you can't tell, she actually ate most of my mashed potatoes that came with my filet. The filet was delicious, cooked perfectly, had just a little tiny bit of char on the outside, and had a Bordelaise sauce that was awesome with it paired up perfectly and there was some broccolini on there as well so you could have a healthier vegetable i guess but overall absolutely love my steak great option on the menu and for my entree i ordered the golden tile fish this was highly recommended by our server and he was right he did a great job recommending things tonight it came with jupiter rice chorizo risotto and pink shrimp the flavors were really amazing and I liked how light this meal was because we did have a lot as far as our appetizers go. And so this was really nice because it had so much flavor, but it wasn't a really heavy meal. It was also a very light and flaky fish, not very fishy tasting at all. Yeah really meaty and kind of like a mahi-mahi as far yeah. as the texture goes, but honestly, I liked it better than mahi-mahi. It's one of my favorite types of fish, so I guess I'm a little bit biased there, but they did a really good job seasoning it and searing it, and then of course the bed of risotto that it was on was also delicious. And notice he knew how that tasted. That's why I knew how his mashed potatoes tasted, because we share we are one. Sharing, I took a bite of the <laughs> tile fish and risotto. You took like all of my mashed potatoes. Shh, you're not supposed to tell them that. Well, I... Moving on from that, we also added a couple enhancements onto our meal. Essentially, they're add-ons yeah. for your dinner. If you really want extra sides, they have them. The first one was a truffle macaroni and cheese. I was really looking forward to this because I like truffle mac and cheese. I like truffle pretty much anything, truffle fries, popcorn, whatever but I felt like this was a very different thing that I was expecting. I was expecting more of a mac and cheese with truffle on top or maybe added in a little bit. This was very, very heavy on the truffle. There were lots of big mushrooms there in the mac and cheese and the noodles that they made in house are almost like a gnocchi, which was really good, but all it tasted like was a ton of truffle. So I wasn't a big fan of this one. Alyssa wasn't either. So we decided just, this is not our favorite thing. We'll stick with the other things that we got. We also got one other enhancement with the grilled marble potatoes that had the Serrano ham with it and manchego cheese and this tomato aioli. I really like this. It wasn't as good as my mashed potatoes were, but since no. I needed potatoes because mine somehow disappeared off my plate, I got to eat these and I actually really liked it. The ham and the cheese on top, it was a little bit different than a typical side dish, but it was very tasty. I actually didn't enjoy these as much. I'll stick with the regular mashed potatoes. It was good, it did have great flavor, but I definitely enjoyed other things more than this. For instance, the dessert. Now, I did not ask the server for recommendations because I pretty much looked to see if they have anything chocolate and that's what I'm pretty much always gonna go with. And they did have a chocolate dessert. It was a chocolate torte and it was gorgeous. This came out and it was a masterpiece, piece of art. I loved it so much. It was actually kind of sad that we had to break it open to eat it because it looked so pretty. There was tons of chocolate on the outside, but inside, once we broke it open, it had cherries and ganache inside. I normally prefer raspberry or strawberry with chocolate, but the cherries were a perfect blend with this. I'm so glad they went with that. The flavors were amazing. And I did try one little bite of this. It was incredibly rich, but she's right. It was very, very good. Not my kind of dessert usually. I'm not usually big on the heavy chocolate stuff. So I chose to get the orange blossom flan. Even though I'm not a big fan of flan most of the time, it's what the server recommended and he's been spot on so far. Mm -hmm. And this was exactly what I wanted to end things. A lighter note than the heavy chocolate mm -hmm. like Alyssa had. It was very heavy on the orange. So if you don't really care for orange, that was the dominating flavor. They brulee the top just a little bit. So it's got a little bit of crispy sugar on top there. There's a shortbread cookie on the bottom and this little piece of dried fruit in between the flan and the shortbread. I love the combination. I ate the entire thing because I thought it was great. Alyssa wasn't as big of a fan, but I think it's because she had that super sweet chocolate. It was a very drastic change to go from my more mild chocolate dessert to his incredibly flavorful dessert. It was just a lot to take in. It tasted great. I did actually enjoy it, 
but between the two flavors, it was a lot to go back and forth to. And then to wrap things up, I ordered a cappuccino because they do have a fancy coffee machine up there. And I thought I just wanted something to kind of finish things out, either tea or coffee. And I went with a cappuccino this time. It was great, very well done. I got sugar to add to it and actually really didn't need it because it was a great coffee that they used. Overall, this whole meal has been very, very satisfying. So many good flavors, a few misses, mostly hits, and honestly, I loved this meal. We also loved the vibe in this restaurant. Of course, the food was great. The servers did a wonderful job tonight, but it wasn't as loud as some other restaurants that can be pretty loud, especially if the ceilings are taller. Because these have shorter ceilings, it's not as large of a restaurant. Yes, there is noise. There's, of course, other people there, but we really enjoyed the ambiance, the vibe, and this was just overall a wonderful place to go. That being said, we are not going to be going back here super frequently because it is a signature dining experience, which means you get all dressed up, but you also pay more for the experience. All in with our four starters and our two drinks and our two entrees and two desserts, we spent almost $250, including the tip and our discount for being a DVC member or annual pass holder. Not the cheapest meal we've ever had at Disney, but it was very good. We really enjoyed this. I would totally go back for any kind of special occasion, birthday, anniversary, whatever it may be. And comparing it to other signature restaurants like Topolino's Terrace and California Grill that are open right now, I would probably pick this one over any other signature restaurant that at least is currently open. And if you find it difficult to get a reservation here, or maybe you just want to get some drinks, you can go to the lounge, you can order anything off the menu from the bar, and of course you can order any of the drinks as well. So it's a great place to go, maybe late at night after you've been at the park. If you want to just go chill, but you don't necessarily want to have a reservation, you can go to the bar and get everything you'd want anyway. Specifically, the strawberry salad. That <laughs> is just was so the good. perfect thing to have after a hot day in the park. Mm -hmm. I could imagine coming back, getting that, having a drink sitting there in the lounge area, that'd be perfect. We hope you found this review helpful. If you do end up going and this was helpful, please let us know in the comments. We love knowing that we were able to help review things for everyone. And of course, we enjoy eating for those reviews you know, as well. We, we sacrifice for the greater good. It's what we do. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And until next time, we're here with the ears.